<laughs> okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming on uh, um, to Tech Town tonight for our next meeting of the New Tech Meetup. Come on in, folks, we're just starting. We're a little bit loose on time to allow for late arrivals. Um, we have uh, our usual couple of speakers, which we're really excited by this evening, and then we'll have four entrepreneurs speak. Um, for those of you, like me, that missed last month, we've had a new feature, you actually get to vote on the speakers. So we'll be texting, I see everyone has their text capable phone here tonight, you can't go without them. So try to stay ahead of the technology curve. So to begin, I'd like to thank all of our sponsors for this evening. Um, very great class we always talk about, making sure we all stay healthy. Text Triple, Blue Water Angels, Detroit Economic Growth Corporation, Biz of You, Quicken Loans, Mental Note Online. Uh, we're always looking for additional sponsors, so anyone that wins another quarter million dollars in a business plan competition, just send a check our way, please. We really appreciate it. Um, let us go ahead and start with our first speaker for this evening. Uh, Lorenzo Thurman is Executive Director of the Detroit Met Micro Enterprise Fund. Uh, prior to joining the fund in 2007, he was the Economic Development Officer of the Mission Interfaith Trust Fund for the last six years. He has more than eight years of experience in community and economic development and small business lending. He has some materials which he'll pass out, but the mission of the Detroit Micro Enterprise Fund is to provide small business loans to entrepreneurs who do not have access to capital through traditional lending resources. He has a passion for working with individuals and assisting them in maximizing their God-given talents and abilities. So, um, as soon as Lorenzo finishes handing those out, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm in a hurry. I, uh, my band pool has been kind enough to wait for me to take me back to Ann <laughs> So um, he stated, you know, quite a, quite a bit what our mission is. Uh, we were established in 2007. We have a number of programs, and our core program, we basically provide startup and existing uh, well, loans to startup and existing businesses in Detroit, Highland Park, Hamtramck, Pontiac, Ecorse, and uh, River Rouge. We also have an SBA program, uh, a green program as well. The, the, the use of this money can be for a number of things. It can be for working capital, equipment, advertising, inventory, uh, et cetera. We will not pay off any existing debt, or if you're going to have any investment property, we won't pay off anything uh, like that. We have a two-step application process. The first is a pre-application. We ask for a brief description of your business that, or how you're going to use the money. We do pull the credit report, but we're a little bit different in a bank in that we don't focus on the credit score. We just look at how we paid the credit the last few years. Then we give you an opportunity to address that with a letter of explanation. Uh, the staff reviews the pre-application. If we approve it, then we move to a full application. That's going to require your business plan, the financial projections, all the management responsibilities. And then that would have to be approved by a loan committee and our board of directors. So the entire time frame will probably take about six uh, to eight weeks. Our fund can be used in a number of ways. Obviously, you know, it's a startup capital, but sometimes you may go to a bank and a bank is going to lend you 60 or 70% of the value of your uh, collateral. We can come and piggyback on the <coughs> bank loan. If the value of collateral is 100,000, they're only going to lend you 70,000. We can come and actually provide the additional 30,000 to make that project work. Uh, some of the projects that we finance, I don't know if you've heard of some of these, Will House in Detroit, Bicycle Run on Circus Shot downtown on the Detroit Riverfront, Cafe 1923 is a coffee house in Hamtramck, the Yoga Suite is a yoga suite in Hamtramck as well, Taste of Ethiopia is an Ethiopian restaurant in the Eastern Market, and Exergetic Energy was our first green loan. This is the guy who actually designs and uh, going to install solar panels throughout correction facilities throughout the country. Um, we have a training program that, that just started. We're located here in Tech Town. 
Our point person is Corey Shiver, who's our business development representative. You'll probably do it with Corey if you call the office. And uh, I'll be happy to answer any quick questions, or I don't know how the form's going to go. But I'm wrapping up. <laughs> okay. All right. Any questions? I have a swipe box. Go ahead. <laughs> do you want existing businesses? Yes, we do. Yeah, we'll go up to 50000 for existing, and we'll go up to 10000 for startups. Any in the IT area? I'm sorry? Any in the IT area? Uh, yeah, I see data communications, which provides all of the IT work for Tech Town and Next Energy. We probably provided a long to do as well. Yeah. Any more? Just real quick, I noticed in the uh, in your pamphlet here references that this woman won a uh, was awarded a ten thousand dollar grant, technology grant. Is that different from the loan? It, it is. There was another program that was sponsored with some of the casino fund for the city of Detroit. Tech Town had something called the Tech Town Innovation Fund, but the thing when you provide free money, you can't really replenish the pot, so all of the money is gone, you know, and so that program no longer. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you guys for having me. And uh, come and see me. I'm right upstairs on the second floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. With that, I'd like to move over to Rob Palmer. Uh, Rob is president of our Zika LLC. He has 15 years of business development and management experience. He's worked in a number of industries, including technology, health and fitness, M&A, and international event business. For the last three years, he's been president of our Zika. Uh, and some of the events that they've been involved with are Vitamin Warriors 30-day uncapped live events, Future Midwest, TEDx Detroit, which I'm sure a number of you have heard of, Midwest Technology Leaders, and Michigan Emerging which is starting next week, is that uh, 14th. 14th, two weeks from now. Yes. So hopefully everyone here is going to go down to that event. So there we have our first slide. So Rob, go ahead and take it away. Well, I mentioned uh, November 14th is, is uh, our Michigan Emerging event that we have, and we've actually set up a code for everybody who wants to attend. Uh, for this evening, just type in the code DTEC11. I believe that's correct, right? Yes, okay. Uh, DTEC11, we have a special discount code to attend. But um, I'm here to talk about World Entrepreneurship Week, and um, one of the reasons that I'm here speaking about that is we've, my company has really supported over the last few years. We have um, Joe Venuto and Katie Hayes, who are uh, directors and assistant directors for Michigan World Entrepreneurship Week. But um, in a moment, I'm going to make it this evening, so um, So, global entrepreneurship, how many people have heard of, heard of it? Great. Um, really what it is, is it's a fantastic week-long event starting, it always starts in November. It goes through and has um, events throughout the, the country, um, here for Global Entrepreneurship Week, but as well as throughout the world. Um, I'm going to go through a few slides, so bear with me. These just got sent to me earlier today. Um, and what we'll do is kind of inform you a little bit about it, how you can get involved, and uh, get you excited about it. Okay, I know there's a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs here, uh, people that have started businesses. Um, I saw some profiles of people that have sold their businesses. Uh, we even saw somebody here has a, started 1.5. Um, and I'm hoping that that one is still going, it's not a failure. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So as we go through here, we can see that during the week of uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week, there is actually, I think there's 38,000 events throughout the world that are going on. Um, and it's really not just a week-long event. It's, it's, that's what it's categorized as, but it's a way to find out all the different types of events, resources, and support that you have as an entrepreneur or a startup company um, so you can collaborate and work with individuals. Um, as I mentioned, uh, they have a, a, there's, um, a congress of organizers and partners that work together at this global link to make sure that these events run smoothly. Um, and I think it's right here, right? 
So seven million people were involved last year, last year um, which is a very high number of people talking about the entrepreneurship week. Um, it's actually meant to, there's also challenges. So it's not just about starting a business and where to go, but they also have competitions. Uh, they give out millions and millions of dollars throughout the world. And as you can see, it started in 2008, where 77 countries were involved, and uh, it's grown every year. So I think um, last year, obviously, was the largest year. It's about 104 countries, uh, which is amazing when you look at the people who are involved in, in the events as well. So there are, um, it's not just for the startup entrepreneurs, it's also for people who are entrepreneurial companies, to mentor, which you can see there's thousands of people that get together um, and help mentor the next generation of entrepreneurs, which is extremely important. Uh, 7,644 major brands uh, get together on this. This is actually started by the Kauffman Foundation. Um, and as you see here, these are some of the global leaders that are involved. President Obama spoke here recently talking about the importance of entrepreneurship how it's going to spur, which is the most important thing uh, for our economy. Uh, Prince Charles, but my two favorite are Richard Branson and of course Snoop Dogg. Yeah. So, uh, of course. Of course, yeah. Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to highlight on a couple of points globally that, that go on some of the events that happen. Um, ways that you can get involved. Uh, has anybody heard of Startup Weekend? So it's, it's a fantastic uh, event that's happening. You can see more than 30 cities around the world host that. And it's a um, competition over 54 hours, newly formed teams get together, start up, um, and present their businesses to and judges. Uh, the other one is Clean Tech Open Global. Uh, this basically puts um, for Clean Tech, obviously for Clean technology, excuse me. Last year, the winner of Denmark um, actually had this super light structure, which minimized the energy and materials necessary for large global construction. So it's not just small things, it's actually very, very large. Next, we have the um, year. And this is actually uh, 45,000 entrants from around the world be for a free year-long tour meeting with world leaders, innovators, and inspiring entrepreneurs. Which I thought was fantastic. Um, it'd be a lot of fun to go travel now for a year. So if you look. And then start up open, which basically takes everybody who was funded between last year and this year and will be recognized in advance of the year. So next week we'll get the final. Ways that you can stay informed on what events are going on. Uh, there's two websites. Unleashingideas.org is the global. So you can go and find out what's happening at the global scale. Uh, and then GWUSA, GlobalEntrepreneurshipUSA.org is how you find out about what's going on in the United States. It's really nice. It breaks it down to the state um, that you are in find out uh, and can be involved. So ways that you can, uh, one of the things that they want us to, to mention is their objectives are to inspire, connect, mentor, and engage. Um, a couple of those things that I think are very, very important, obviously, are the connect and mentor. There's, it's very hard to, when you start out as an entrepreneur, I found this out, if you, don't, you think you're alone, you can start it out and you think you have these problems, uh, but nobody else is facing you're the only one with problems. But when you connect on some of these events, you find out that people are going through similar things as well. And that leads into mentorship, which is a fantastic way to, to start with high school students, uh, new graduates, and people who are starting out, to let them know of ways that they can make, not make the mistakes that you make. Um, and, uh, and then you want to engage to come to these events. There's a couple of uh, big events that are taking place starting November 14th. Uh, one of them, it's a shameless plug, is my event, uh, Michigan Emerging, 
um, is actually kicking off the entrepreneurship week. The governor's coming in uh, to speak. It's at Kobo. Uh, he's talking about the great things that are happening, a lot of the things that you guys are doing. Uh, so he's going to be presenting tonight, things like that, how to uh, support them. Um, and it's, it's going to be a fantastic event. And, uh, it's a way to motivate, dominate, and collaborate. Uh, the next one is starting on Tuesday through Thursday is Accelerate Michigan, where it has a um, fantastic lineup of, of companies that have gotten together, um, which is the New Town Initiative, and our Spark, Automation Alley, Tech Town, and Home Incubator. Um, so there's so many things to get involved with in Global Entrepreneurship Week. You have to know there's a lot of resources here in the state, locally, this um, view. Tech Town, um, all these great places that you can get support. Uh, Katie Hayes, as I mentioned before, she's involved in the Lots Worship Week. She'd be more than happy to answer any questions. I will as well. Um, I'll be here for the rest of the night if you have any, any questions. Thank you very much. Rob, this year, where is Michigan Virgin going to be held? At COA. Last year it was held at the Ford Conference, the Conference Center. And it's grown so large, they're kind of busting at the seams. It's now it's moved out to Cobo, which is a great venue to sort of showcase what's going on. So. And it's one of the one of the things that we want to focus on is that we want everybody to get out the silos and get out of the barriers that we're working and work together, really to collaborate, to make sure that you know, everybody's successful. And I think the people that are going to be there, the leaders, the companies, is is going to be great. About how many people do you think? Just a wild uh, estimate. 500. Okay. And everyone got the uh, discount code DTEC11? Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> so we'll get to it, boys. Let's go ahead then with our first speaker. That will be Mark Osage. Mark, among many other illustrious things, one of my classmates here at Tech Town, so he and I go way back. Um, I always try to give a couple background pieces of information while the slides are coming up. Mark has a very silo-based background. He has a bachelor's degree in psychology with a focus in behavioral neuroscience, a master's degree in information systems, he also went to massage therapy school. Now, if that isn't focused, I don't know what it is. And his business is all about helping people manage their emotions through the use of the internet. So, Mark, take it away. Thanks, Milton. This is Milton said, I'm Mark with MyMentalSpace.com, and we help manage emotions from internet use. Uh, you may be asking yourself, what do you mean emotions from internet use? Well, we like to coin it as non-productive internet use. We're not anti-internet. We're about raising your self-awareness of how the internet can your emotion of mood. So we all can kind of admit to the time wasted, at the internet trap, you just get sucked in, whether you're checking your email repeatedly or your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend's Facebook profile, it's not healthy, it does not help your emotion of mood. We kind of shift over to the middle and uh, techno brain burnout is a phenomenon that we're seeing where people uh, are constantly being stimulated by what they see online and their neural pathways are continuously firing creating uh, burnout. So the symptoms are fatigue, anxiety, and subtle levels of depression. Uh, I would estimate that that becomes rampant over the next couple of years. And then cyberbullying, a lot of us have heard about that from the tragedies that people take into life and being harassed online to just the schools that are having problems in their elementary and middle school level of people being harassed through the internet. So we have a solution, the Mental Space Management. This is a free plugin for your web browser. You can set how long you want to be online before you start surfing. When your time expires, we'll let you know. You can either extend your time, or you can choose to cast the time. If you want to block a site, let's say it's Facebook, we ask you how long you're blocking it and why you're blocking it. So for the example, you block Facebook for a week. On day two, you try to possibly get back on Facebook. We interrupt that request and show you a positive quote, image, or video. You can rank that content, just like you can songs on Pandora. So we can get smarter to the concept that's more effective in preventing you from going online. And then we can track your mood so we can show you trends in your internet behaviors based on shifts in your mood. 
our market, we have our under 18 and our over 18. Uh, that speaks to kind of our sales strategy, which is the freemium versus the premium. Everything that I just mentioned that you can download today for Firefox or, or Chrome is available <coughs> to the any group. Our premium version gets into uh, how we're going to make money through software as a service, and we would kind of add some additional functionality so people can manage groups of students, children, or employees. How are we different? A lot of sites that claim to block internet or manage internet traffic just does that. It gives you a 404 message and you can't get online. Well, we like to leverage behavioral modification and do that through the block web pages. As you can see, we do quotes, images or, images or videos, all of which you can rank. You can also add content to your mental space, which just is linked to your profile. And in the process of doing so, we ask you, what emotion does this content represent? What we're doing here, but that nobody else is doing, is we're gathering emotional data on content. We hope to be able to use that behavioral data to sell the research institutions or marketing and advertising companies looking to better understand the types of images or quotes or videos that evoke certain emotions. We also will be able to track why people are blocking certain sites, why they're unblocking certain sites, what's the most content, what's the most effective content to keep people off Facebook, etc. So why fund us? Notice how the internet controls your time. Notice how your emotions are affected by the web. And watch us grow. This is just a picture from when we were at Cranbrook School speaking at the World Affairs Seminar on uh, technology and vision. Thank you for your time. itself uh, kind of goes against any security protocol because, as you know, if you're in a web browser, downloading a plugin or an extension doesn't require any security access. But we never track the data back to the individual. Would you let them know that on the website? Yep. Yes. If you don't track the data back to the individual, how do you gather your information from the demographic? We don't track, um, well, we, the data we do track on the individual is like any other basic account creation. Uh, age, uh, first name, email address, state, and gender. As far as individual internet sites you go to, that, that data is tracked in the aggregate. Okay. Question for you guys. Uh, is this something you would use? Just show of hands. about raising self-awareness for your own internet behavior. Oh, okay. A lot of uh, parents or employers will kind of mandate what sites you can and can't go to. As we know with addiction or with anything else that's bad for us, we are the last people to make to make notice that it's an issue in our life. So as the internet becomes more and more of the medium of our living, we need to be aware of how long you're connected and how that impacts just your general you know, exercise activities or whether you're getting screen fatigue or constantly online and not going outside or interacting with your friends or your children or your spouse, etc. Uh, you know, it's really about self-awareness. So that's what we try to do through the data that you collect is to show the individual user because it's not a social networking site in the sense that you can, you know, have a bunch of friends share your information. You do have your, sorry, I didn't mention this, but when you block a site, let's say it's Facebook, and we show you an image and you're like, this image is stupid, I still want to get on Facebook. You can click unblock and an email gets sent to your mental space admin. This is a friend that can approve or deny your request to get back online. A significant feature that I uh, glossed over. Yes? When most of the people in the room say they won't use it, does that mean we're the ones that really need it? <laughs> Self-awareness through behavioral modification, right? So 
so when you set your time and 20 minutes goes by and you're, you know, you're late for that next meeting, as opposed to getting sucked into DIG or CNN, we interrupt your request and say, hey, listen, you know, it's time to get offline. But yes, we're, 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 we've looked at uh, essentially what, what would be considered uh, a time allowance that you can allocate yourself for the sites you want to go on by category, social media, news, etc. How does it work for you and your staff? <laughs> yeah, it's a great question. Um, it's funny, I, I've been using it for about three months now, and I'll find myself going to go on Facebook and then finding a quote from Winston Churchill that gives me that little bit of inspiration I need to stay focused and do what I need to do. So it's been effective. Do you have a smartphone app because you can log on to the internet on your smartphone too? So yes. how are you going to like... <laughs> we don't have a smartphone app. That, that would be one of our first milestones if we, uh, saw, if we were able to uh, secure some outside outside the restaurant. Because that would be cheating. Yes. <laughs> Have you thought about what the pricing is going to be? Like exactly or what caps? Like yeah, again, I think the biggest thing is, is is getting traction right now on our free version. It's always been my intent to make this free. I think a lot of the most successful smaller startups have been because they've had a free software as a service. Our organizations like Tech Town have really influenced us to say, what's your business model? You sell them on the day, what's the price, who's drinking it? So we try to say, okay, we can have some additional services for, you know, what are not of of some of the services. So, so like as a as a parent, <coughs> you can manage your children, so groups of people, and maybe you know, you know, allocate a certain time that they can spend online. Um, what I don't know the exact features yet to the premium because we haven't developed it yet, but it would be like a three ninety nine or a, you know four ninety nine kind of like the you know that sweet price point that. Last question. For profit or not? It's, it's a for profit. Thank you for your time. Please go to my <laughs> This is a perfect example of some of the types of value that we try and provide. I think this is the second time that Mark has talked to this group, in addition to my being in class with them. And as he said, the feedback from this group and from Tech Town was, that's great, how are you going to monetize it? So that's part of what we try to do is, you know, what's, what's our feedback? And it does count, so they, they move that. Uh, next speaker we have is Lawrence Harper. Lawrence is going to come on up. Um, you know, background interest. Um, Lawrence is a fan of the Tigers way back when they had 100-game losing seasons. If you're into doubles and mixed doubles, uh, card games and whatnot, he is the man that wants to talk to you. And what he's going to talk a little bit about is the future of protecting first responders and disaster planning. You know, we know things are going to happen, so he wants to start to, how can you address some of those eventualities? So Thank you. Up. Hi, I'm Lawrence Harper. I brought with me an animated sound presentation uh, the first responder aspect of this is part of the smart medical homes that we are looking uh, to begin. No one wants to go to a hospital, you heal better at home, the technology is here in place for us to do it, and we start the presentation. I'll take your questions thereafter.
Yes. 
I'm sorry. It seems that you could take out a lot of the noise that's in there about even referring to disasters, but instead just overall preparedness. Yes, I, I agree. And I agree with that. There should be two separate presentations. Is that I was sitting here looking at people and nodding down. I was thinking, you know what? There should be two separate presentations. And so you're right. The next time I will focus more on the smart medical home and the use of disaster in a separate yeah. presentation. Okay. Yes. One more question. Yes, one more question. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.
So I know what I'm going to do, but I don't know what to give him. Okay? Because there are 13 targets down the human body. What am I going to hit? Well, what happens is down inside, inside of the whole thing on this little pedestal down there, there are two devices. One is a computer controlled laser light with a mirror. That is going to paint the actual circle where you're supposed to strike somewhere on this surface and you'll see it appear. It wasn't there ahead of time. And so then you'll strike. So once you know what you're going to do, you see it come up, okay? So you give it the strike. When you strike it, three things are going to happen. Number one, the computer knows when it came to the picture. The moment you touch the surface, the camera, this other device is an high def camera, it's looking, it's scanning the inside of that bed. The moment you begin a ripple, it knows how much time it took between it showed you where to hit and where you made contact. So that's your response time. After that, you're going to go on into it and you're going to create this dimple inside that piece. It's going to track the dimple to its biggest size, and from that it's going to know how many pounds per square inch you actually put in there. So now you've got time, how long it took you, how much power. It's also going to track how accurate you were. It knows where it came the circle, how did that dimple end up looking. Okay? So three very important things about the martial arts. I love this as a martial artist because when you're working on a technique, it involves your whole body, everything can happen in a different sequence. You don't know what's the best way to do it. And you can't have somebody stand in front of you while you repeatedly hit them and see how loud they say ouch. Right? So this is going to be a great tool for that. But the other thing is, it's, it's aerobic and it's going to keep you moving, getting everything involved in it. Okay? I love that about it. Now, um, it also runs, it says here on various interfaces, okay? The software for it, the software and your routines, so the many routines, can all fit on a flash drive. It can run off of your iPod, okay? It can run off of your Mac or PC or whatever you do. So it's going to be... About 20 more seconds. 20 more seconds? Oh, we want to get that run. Anyway, you get the points, show you what it does, you track it over time, your progress over time, you get your point, your speed, your power, your accuracy. Okay? Manual DVD on the website, teach users how to operate it, some of it for a computer game, or get kids using these instead of using a Wii and things like that, that you can use and learn how to uh, defend themselves. Target markets all over. Parents, children, businesses, martial arts studios, excuse me. The military is interested in this, law enforcement. Okay. Uh, the competitors all over the world. Real quick, I'm sorry, I didn't know we were running out of time. Anyway, all kinds of money in this, as it says below, Uber is going to place $3 billion dollar in the industry and this type of thing. This will, I think, be a revolution of the way you can use it in homes, put it in fitness clubs, put it in martial arts studios. Okay, and we're just looking for the money to do this thing. Great.
sell it? Are you going to direct to customers? Are you to oh, retailers? A lot of different ways. Number one, we would go after martial arts studios and fitness clubs. Uh, we can see them going in there because they will run in tandem. So if you've got 10 of them in the martial arts club, you can say, okay, it's testing day, the parents are here, let's put them all on in one program and let all the kids test and do like that. Okay? Fitness clubs, they can have their class and do the same thing. So they will, um, is that a question again? Yeah, yeah, we would want to make the martial arts people and the fitness clubs actually dealers as well. So you've got people that are using them, why not sell them in the way that you're selling them? Have you spoken to any martial arts clubs yet? I mean, yeah, you know you're interested, but do you have a real world you say, yes, I'm dying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of talk to fitness clubs. Everybody is, is very interested in looking at you know, that kind of thing. Right. Yes, yeah, have you considered like a, a Kickstarter project and make the first like 10 or 15 of these units to like show there's real demand for ones that actually exist? That's, anything's possible. To me, most of the price is going to be getting the molds made, the plastic and all that stuff. That's and all the uh, putting the software together, which we can do, which we can do. But um, from what I've been told, if you're going to try to sell something like this, you need about a thousand of them, and you reach out to people who are warehousing and you know, shipping out, things like that. But I mean, to me, most of the money is going to come in just being able to make the first one. After that, you're just punching them out. To me, this seems like more of a video game. Like what Rock Band or Guitar Hero. This could be, you know, a thing you buy with the, the CD-ROM that goes in your PlayStation, and you would buy it for a few hundred dollars. But this seems more you get in front of a lot of people because it's fun and engaging. But it's to me, it seems more of like a game. Well, it, it is like a game. It is like a game. I mean, if you're a kid, I see this as a family too. You got the father. Yeah, I mean, we all kick together. Oh, it's, it's a hell of a game. Yeah, yeah. 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 And because it's soft and everything, you're not going to get hurt. You're not going to get damage in your joints and your bones. It's something to consider. I don't know. It's just where my head's at. Yeah, so going back to the Kickstarter <laughs> thing, how far along are you with developing a prototype? Or is, is, what's the $800,000? Yeah, let me back up. I made a prototype from a device I bought from a sporting goods store seven years ago. You know, I've just got a water-filled base with a hard plastic uh, tube in it and then hand around it. Took the padding off, drilled holes in the thing, put in some piezo sensors, hooked it up to my computer, and it worked. It worked, and it proved up. So I know that there's no problem with it working. Uh, so, but as far as a working prototype to do this, but once again, the cost is in designing it, making the molds, you know, getting the first ones. It's like making a car, right? Once, you, once you've got the car on the assembly line, you can make tens of thousands of them, but it costs you. Most, but have you most, checked into the actual manufacturing costs to get a prototype? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got an engineering company I've talked to. I, I got, believe me, I've got seven years <laughs> of information on all of this. So, yeah, I've got people who can do it, and this is a surprise. Okay. We just hit our time. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. 
and the, the websites have already gotten uh, definitely tens of thousands of hits, so definitely interested in seeing what he has to talk about. Alex, go ahead. Yeah, it's, it is really exciting so far that in about two or three weeks, roughly, um, since the site went live, and I want to keep this really informal, guys, to be honest with you, and just kind of give you a run through of the site if you haven't seen it before. I know several of you I have reached out to individually. Uh, we basically put this up, and the intention was uh, to address a pain point that I think a lot of us have had, uh, both individually and collectively, which is there are a lot of great meetup groups like Team Attack and Tech Brewery and Ann Arbor, and uh, there are almost these little pockets of individuals who are involved in the startup, you know, startup culture in Southeast Michigan and even uh, expanding out a little bit more, I would say, to Michigan as a whole. So we recognize that there needed really to be a bridge between uh, online interactions and then driving people to events like what we had tonight. So uh, we basically put up the site and a lot of the content that's on here, you can see basically the beginning of an article uh, that was a Q&A with Alex Schiff, who's a U of M student and co-founded a company called Fetch Notes. Um, a lot of the content is really guest authored. It's about startups in the area, definitely uh, heavy tech focus. But uh, we, we saw this as an opportunity to really build on, provide one core focus on startup activity in this region for people really all over the country to kind of see what we have going on here as a whole. So uh, I think there were really basically three, three goals in putting this together. Uh, first being to kind of demystify the idea of becoming an entrepreneur, right? I mean, when you start out, it feels like you're on an island, you are trying to tap into resources and get involved, and uh, having, having an online community where there's uh, group involvement, group participation, I think would be a huge benefit for this area. And if you look at other startup hubs across the country that have done well, whether it's in Boston, you have Boston Innovation, or you're out in Chicago, you have um, the group out there in Boulder, there's a uh, large tech uh, focus, and that's uh, driven by a group called Entrepreneur, Entrepreneurial by Nature, uh, as well as the New York Tech Meetup, which has a list of startups that is uh, called Made in NYC. So what we did was we put a list together of the Detroit startup list, and it basically encompasses uh, Michigan, because I expanded it to include companies from Ann Arbor and Lansing and so on and so forth, but startup companies, venture capital companies, uh, local meetup groups like Demon Tech, uh, anything that could basically be a resource for somebody who lives in this region and has interest in tapping in and getting involved in the local community. So that's, I mean, I'm, I want to keep it simple, that's kind of the premise, but it's not really a complicated idea. It's just the fact that right now, look at, you know, I came from the, the business, and you look at the news and free press, they're great at what they do, but there's not one singular um, media outlet that has a focus on technology and new media, and I think this could be uh, the bridge to get a lot of positive exposure for startups and technology in this region. So that's, that's my intention. Uh, my ask, because I know somebody's going to ask me, <laughs> is that I need the buy from everyone in this community. I need the involvement, I need guest authorship of folks. Um, a local entrepreneur that has a startup called Heal Pay wrote a post pretty recently that was called, I want to make sure I get the name right, so bear with me one second. Put that TechCrunch down. And for anyone who has any familiarity with TechCrunch, it's a big national technology publication online. The premise behind the article was basically Guys, we're, we look out there, we look at what's going on in Silicon Valley or these startup clubs across the country and become disenchanted with these large funding rounds where you read about a company that gets you know, $50 million in uh, investment before they even have a, a minimally viable product. And it basically sets these unrealistic expectations when really we should be focusing on the activities here locally and building each other up, helping one another in our startup activities. What's your, uh, what's your business model? Uh, what's your revenue model? I don't have one. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I would stress the same cost of operating a, a 
portal if you have your expensive uh, say, you know, servers, your programming, your time. You need to sustain those other things. So that question becomes how do you take that portal essentially and monetize? I mean, we will say there's advertising. Yeah. But I, I think that. there's there's advertising opportunities with with a you know a, a niche focused site like this, you're not going to have millions of impressions where I, I, I would see that as a viable option to really sustain it. But I also in that with, with respect to that, I don't see it as having huge overhead. There is guest authorship of posts. And down the line I would I would love to see involvement from local business leaders in the community where there are a half dozen sponsoring companies. Not unlike what happens here, you know, there's there's support from Businesses. So it's a profit or not profit? It's a for profit business. Well, I mean, in that case, we might consider a 501c3 model given the fact, or a, a, a C6, which would at least be a monthly membership, or if you will, it would be a membership subscription fee or something like that. Yeah, but over there, if you've got to have money coming in, because that costs money. Back. So two questions. One, are you creating any new content, or are you just grabbing content from other areas and displaying it, putting it in a more usable pattern? Everything on here is proprietary content. It always will be. I, I see guest authorship by local entrepreneurs, local startup leaders, local guys in the community really driving the content. I feel like that that uh, promotes authenticity, it promotes, hey, I, I'm in this as well, I've been through this struggle, you're likely to be able to relate to it. None of the content on here, we have about a dozen stories so far, none of it is uh, repurposed content in any way, shape, or form. Uh, you say you're like a tech crunch for reusable? Absolutely. I mean, that, that's, that was really the intention starting out was, to build a localized tech branch to give exposure, uh, media exposure to startups locally that otherwise would not have it. And really force national media through one, you know, one outlet like this to pay attention to this community as a whole. And I feel like we're accomplishing that, getting national recognition from everyone from the founder of TechCrunch, Michael Arrington, to Jason Calacanis, who's an active angel investor, to VCs in Texas and in the Bay Area as well. So you got to figure out a way to pick the pies. That's the goal. Is part of the purpose to give publicity to new startups or to serve as an event calendar? Because one of the things I've seen, it's impossible for people to find out across the state all the events that are going on. Just, I, no I mean, one I'd, be curious, I'd be curious to find out. Like We have a good, good sampling of people in here. Where do you guys get your tech news from? A2 Geeks. A2 Geeks. Hacker News. Where is your Detroit News? Like Hacker News is not. Yeah, Hacker is a great, great site. It's national. A2 is very originally focused on Ann Arbor. You see this as being like the voice? for people like us in this room, for, for the region. So it's a way for people like us who are entrepreneurs in this room to have a platform to speak to the rest of the region and you are now getting buy-in or peers, eyes from people outside of the region, like you said, Texas and stuff. Then it's now a voice or a platform for people like us to, to get out there. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, honestly, I mean, I think that's what's powerful about it is I set out to build this with the intention that I didn't want it to be about me. I wanted it to be guest author guys in this area. And thankfully, there were a handful of guys that are startup founders in the region, some in Ann Arbor, some in Royal Oaks, some downtown, that stepped up and said, we'll offer posts on here. And that content alone garnered the national. So I want, that's very much, I do want it to be the voice for this community, but I really need to buy in from everyone who's in it and, you know, in the grind on a daily basis. Well, it sound like monetizing is an 
issue. I know how to, I know what he wants. You don't have to worry about much of those. There's not much overhead, to be honest with you. Yeah. We can grab one more from Maria. She's remaining very patiently. Go ahead. Uh, Alex, I'm, I'm really glad that you're working on this project. There is a, a strong need for one place everybody can go to and have our community of entrepreneurs throughout the state, right? I mean, we have, you know, you talk about the different places that we have now um, to find out the different events and different things going on in the startup world. That's just a variety of newsletters like Matt Rauch's Glitter Report, like Diane Grant's from the Great Lakes Entrepreneurs Quest, um, like the different uh, New tech and 18 new, uh, and 80, 80 new tech meetups, but it's not all in one place comprehensive, right? So Absolutely. there is definitely a need. Bizdom wants to support you. I appreciate that. So that's all directed from Bizdom. Yes. <laughs> 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 Just one, one thing on that, because I do want you guys to know. As far as banner placement, it's definitely an option. Yeah, you know, I want it to be unobtrusive, but a big thing for me is if you're a startup founder in the area, if you have a company in the area, you need to be on the Detroit startup list. It's free to get on there to shoot me an email. There are a lot of companies represented, as you can see right now. But more importantly, if you plug into this, you're going to get free banner rotation on the site. So that's something we're setting up right now. So every startup will have uh, prominent place for So I think this is really important to be able to get the word out about the companies in this area. Great. So. Super. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
suggesting that uh, Woodbridge, that's not their trip yet. You know, Woodbridge uh, Cafe or Bar is on uh, Trumbull, just south of uh, the November 8th from 6.30 till about 9 o'clock. Uh, we have a uh, hacker and entrepreneur meetup that Visum is hosting. You can check out the meetup on the DNU Tech website and sign up on our Eventbrite. Uh, 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 it's basically, if you guys are developers, techies, that you want to join one of the cool new startups in Detroit, we've got some uh, great startups at Wisdom that are looking for some technical co-founders to join their teams or to also do project-based um, uh, project things with them. So, Tuesday night, it's going to be a good time. Okay? Cool. That's it. Cool. Any other announcements? Okay, grab some pizza, come on back and continue talking.